Greetings and welcome to Lizard Creations. For this video, I'm going to show you how I pay tribute to people's lives. I've created a millennial time capsule that can store their life history and DNA through documentation, photos, and genealogy. Before I show you how I make my time capsules, I thought I would share why I do it. One of the reasons is because for years I made trilogy tiles for myself. I would make three separate tiles. I would do the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, I'm a Clint Eastwood fan. The good tile covered the wonderful things in my life. My wife, parents, family, friends, achievements, hobbies, travel, the good things. The bad tile covered life's challenges. Accidents, medical issues, mistakes, failures. You know, the things we wish never happened. The ugly tile? Well, I'll leave that to your imagination, but you wouldn't want to be associated with that type of history for all eternity. There are two problems with individual tiles. First, there was an abundance of events that generated lots of updates. In just the past decade, we've had multiple weddings and multiple births. I also created our website, I started wood turning and making YouTube videos. In order to do updates, I had to recreate all three tiles, which generated a lot of work and expense. The second is, I was running out of space on the good tile. I had to shrink photos and font sizes to get things to fit. The photo on the ugly tile was much bigger than the one on the good tile. A couple of years ago, I came up with the idea of creating time capsules. This resolved all of my issues. The time capsule allowed for a lot more information because I could print in smaller fonts on both sides of the page, on multiple pages, and I can include color photos and family trees. I never keep my tiles. I would wrap them to protect them and then I would hide them whenever we would go traveling or I'd go fishing on my boat. These tiles are my legacy and I want them discovered far in the future. I prefer to hide my tiles where archaeologists like to dig and where it's geologically sound. Privacy was always a concern of mine with the trilogy tiles because they were on open face tiles. The time capsules resolved this issue. My original time capsule was encoded and it didn't have a tube for DNA. Over the last couple of years, I've been looking into the best sources and ways of preserving DNA. Saving documents, photos, and family trees will be of interest in the future, but I thought saving DNA would even be better. Imagine what scientists could learn from DNA if, for example, they had the DNA of Socrates, Galileo, Leonardo da Vinci, Tesla, Einstein, or what they could learn from how genetics have changed over time, continents, and cultures. They could analyze the evolution of disease and how our genetics have adapted. It boggles the imagination of what they could learn. During my research into DNA, I came across numerous articles on how durable it is and what causes it to degrade. Heat, moisture, and sunlight are key contributors to the degradation of DNA. I designed my time capsule to reduce or eliminate those effects. I also discovered that DNA has a long half-life. It can have value up to 1.5 million years, but after about 6 million years, there's really no value left in the DNA. That said, scientists believe they have discovered DNA in insects encased in amber that were 100 million years old. I've watched TED Talks on how they are encoding DNA and storing tremendous amounts of data on a small amount of powder in a small vial. The goal is to replace existing storage technology. I don't know how they plan to ensure that future generations will know how to decode it. Having worked in the computer and aerospace industries my entire career, I've seen numerous data storage mediums, hardware interfaces, encoding methods, and file formats. A lot of them have become obsolete during my career. Imagine what it's going to be like in hundreds or thousands of years from now. It is amazing what has already been achieved with DNA. I hope that thousands of years from now, the DNA in my time capsules will be of future benefit to science. Creating my time capsules made me realize just how much has been lost and forgotten. Artists, actors, musicians, inventors, scientists, their memories, technology and creations have faded into obscurity and will be lost forever. At least the information in my time capsules will be around for generations. I only wish I could communicate in other languages. My time capsules could become the Rosetta Stone of the future. Well, I've rambled on long enough. Time to get started. 
I start by marking out the depth of the core. Next, I mark out the width of the core. I fasten layers of wood together to accommodate the size of the tubes. Once the layout is complete, I cut the depth of the core. I can now cut the width of the core. I use a dado blade to cut the width of the slots where the tubes will fit. Note the tape on the table to determine the correct length of the cut. Now that I've completed cutting out the core of the time capsule, I can create the artwork that will be carved into the two granite tiles that go on each side of the core. This is where there are options. Here are some suggestions on how to identify the tubes. If the time capsule is for an individual, you may want to have one tube for documentation before a specific date and the second tube for documentation after that date. This allows one tube to be permanently sealed with a good quality thread seal and the second tube could be sealed with Teflon tape so it can be opened at a later date to allow for updates. Someone may prefer to have one tube for documents and the second tube for small artifacts or photos. If it is a companion time capsule, one tube could be for one person and the other would be for the companion. I use the center tube to store my DNA in small glass vials, but it could be used to store other things that could fit in the vial. I know some people like to store ashes. I can customize the length of the center tube to accommodate more than one vial. The center tube is optional. I plan to make a time capsule for my parents and I have nothing to put in the center tube so it is not needed, but I will have my siblings and the grandchildren that remember them each document their own memories for the time capsule. If the time capsule is for an individual, I can put a different picture and text on each side of the time capsule. If it is a companion time capsule, one side would be for one person and the opposite side would be for the companion. Dates are also optional. I created my first time capsule in July of 2019, so I'm sticking to the date I originally selected for when it should be opened. I figured in 40 years it would be interesting to see how things have changed, if I'm still here. <laughs> of course, all of these are just suggestions. Even though the artwork is carved in stone, it is up to the individual to state what they want before I do the carving. Once the artwork is finished, I will then print it off on a transparent film. I clean the tile before I apply the photosensitive masking material. I apply the mask to the tile after removing the protective liner from the adhesive side of the mask. After the mask is applied, I will place the tile on the artwork in the vacuum exposure table. I cover the tile with a towel to protect the rubber liner while the vacuum is applied. Once the unit is sealed, I will turn on the vacuum. Next, I will turn on the UV lights and expose the mask through the artwork to transfer the image to the mask. Once the image is transferred to the mask, I will tape the edges to protect the sides of the tile from sandblasting. The sound you hear in the background is my compressor. Time to put the tile into the sandblast cabinet. This is where 25 years of experience comes into play. Not enough blasting and the image isn't etched into the stone. Too much blasting and the mask will tear and ruin the tile. After completing the sandblasting, I will remove the tape and the mask. Normally I would soak the tile in warm water which helps remove the mask, but you cannot see the image emerging when the tile is underwater. After the mask is removed, I will clean the tile and then apply tape around the edges before I paint the tile. Next, I will paint the tile. I 
As I remove the tape after the paint has dried, you can see that the paint settles into the areas that have been sandblasted. I remove the excess paint with a sharp scraper. I remove any residual paint by buffing the surface with a synthetic abrasive pad. Once the tiles are finished, I will coat the wooden core with epoxy resin and let it cure for 24 hours. I cut the copper tubes to the length needed for the width of the documents. I apply a thin coating of flux to the pieces before I solder them. When I solder, I make sure the pieces are properly heated and the solder flows into the joints. I try not to use an excessive amount of solder that could flow into the tube. Once the tubes have been soldered, I clean the exterior with a wire wheel. To make sure the inside of the tubes are smooth, I remove any solder or burrs with a file. Although copper has antibacterial and antiviral properties, I still boil the metal components to remove anything that may be in the tubes. I also buff the inside of the tubes with a synthetic abrasive pad and wipe them out with a lint-free paper cloth. The next step is to adhere the core to each of the tiles using epoxy resin. I use the tubes as a guide to ensure the tubes will be at the correct height once they have been inserted into the core. Since the center tube length can vary depending on how many vials it will contain, I drill its hole in the core to ensure it extends the appropriate length above the tiles. The tubes are ready and it is now time to tape the tiles in preparation for the resin. I use aluminum ducting tape for my first layer which protects the resin from UV light. UV light is a key contributor to the degradation of epoxy resin. I apply a second layer of duct tape to ensure nothing leaks when I pour in the resin. Before I begin filling the cavity with resin, I tape down the tubes so they will not float. I pour the resin in stages to reduce the risk of overheating the resin when it cures. Once the cavity has been filled and the resin is cured, I will complete taping the top with aluminum tape and duct tape. The next step is to remove the duct tape from the face of each tile and then buff the tile to remove any glue from the tape. The final steps are to coat the entire time capsule with epoxy resin, pop any bubbles that form, sand the entire time capsule, apply the final coat, and pop the bubbles. Every aspect of my design has been to enhance the durability of the time capsule. I consider chemical, thermal, moisture, corrosion, erosion, organic, and light protection. Every component has been chosen to ensure the time capsule will endure.
Where it is stored will also influence its longevity. A mausoleum is an ideal location. Also, they can be displayed as a monument and can be passed on for generations. And they are small enough to be shipped. If you want to see how durable granite is, you can check out my video on testing granite hieroglyphs. I'll put a link in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it is now time to showcase two of my wife's paintings. The first is Sharing Memories, which is a 16 by 20 inch acrylic painting with a rustic wooden frame. The second is Sharing Memories of the Good Old Days, which is also a 16 by 20 inch acrylic painting with a rustic wooden frame. And remember, have fun, be safe, and create a remarkable treasure.